In this video, we're going to look at how to use Visual Studio Code's remote SSH extension alongside of Teleport. Now, this extension allows users to open any file or folder on a remote machine using SSH, along with the ability to utilize VS Code's full feature set. We'll use Teleport to generate an open SSH config, granting secure, short-lived access to its managed servers via this extension. And we're actually going to be working through this tutorial here in our documentation. So if you go to goteleport.com slash docs, and under server access, you'll see a guide for Visual Studio Code. This video will help give you a visual representation of how to perform this task. So let's start with the prerequisites. First, you'll need a running Teleport cluster. For details on how to set this up, check out our Getting Started video. I'll put a link above. To that, there'll also be a link in the description. But you'll need a running Teleport cluster. You'll also need an open SSH client. If you're on a Linux or Mac OS, you should be fine as it's provided. But if you're on a Windows 10 client, there's a link down here on how to get that set up. Next, you'll need Visual Studio Code with the remote SSH extension. I'll show you that in a minute. And you'll need one or more Teleport nodes with server access enabled. So you just need another server managed by Teleport. Again, if you go to that getting started link that I just previously talked about, it'll all be explained there. So those are the prerequisites. Let's now move on to step one, step one of three. So first time setup, you'll need to configure your local SSH client to access Teleport nodes. So if you look at the example here, you'll need to log into the proxy and you'll need to generate the open SSH config for the proxy. So let me log into my proxy. So I'll do a TSH login. Uh, my proxy is teleport-tr-11.asteroid.earth and my user is teleport admin. I'll enter my password and my OTP token. And that'll give me a certificate to access my Teleport proxy for 12 hours, which is the default. You see that here, valid for 12 hours. And now that we're logged in, we can go ahead and generate the open SSH config for the proxy. So we need to run this command, tsh config with my proxy flag. So tsh config and my proxy. And we want to append this to our config file. So I can hit enter here and copy and paste it there, or I can just use these two arrows and append it. I think that's actually here in the documentation. Yeah, here's the, on a Mac or Linux, just copy this and append it there to your config file. And if you look at what that's added, it essentially adds a host for all of your servers. That's what this wildcard is. And you'll see how that works in just a minute. So we've logged in, we've generated the config and put that into our config file. Now we should be able to connect to the desired node using the following command. So with TSH, I can list all of the servers I have access to. So TSH LS. Now this first one is my actual teleport proxy. So I'm gonna use the other one, which is another server that teleport is managing. So to do that, let me move that down here. We can type in SSH, my user, which is EC2 user at, and it's going to be the node name. So you'll see when you do a TSH LS, you get the node name here. Let's just copy that and paste it. That's the node name. Now we need to add the cluster name separated by a dot. So dot and my cluster name is teleport tr11 asteroid.earth. And that's just the address of your proxy. If you need to know what that is, just type in TSH status and look and see what your cluster name is. So again, SSH user at node name dot cluster name. Hit return and I should be SSH'd into that server. Great, that's working, but this tutorial is not about that. It's about VS Code, so let's keep going. So step two of three, configure Visual Studio Code. So install this remote SSH extension. So if I open Visual Studio Code and go to my extensions tab on the left and type in a remote SSH, there's an extension by Microsoft called remote-ssh. You'll need to install that. I already have it, but if you don't have it, just find this install button and install that extension. Once that's installed, you'll need to set this remote SSH use local server setting to false. So in VS Code, I can go to uh, preferences and settings and just type in part of that sentence like local server. And under extensions in remote SSH, you should be able to disable it here. Yeah, use local server, just make sure that isn't checked. And once that's done, you're ready to connect. To do that, you go down here to these two arrows, click on that, and choose connect to host. And here you'll need to enter what you entered in your terminal a few minutes ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this, leaving off the SSH part. 
So I'm gonna paste that, hit return. It's gonna open a new window for me and try to connect. And you'll see down here now, in the green that I've successfully connected to that server. So I can open my terminal now and access the files on that server. I can do an ls just to see the files. Or to use the files in my editor, I can open up the explorer, choose open folder, and it's gonna automatically assume I want the EC2 user home folder. So I'm okay with that. So there we go. Now I can use the files from my remote server with the full feature set of Visual Studio Code. So next time I log on and need to connect to that server to do some development, I just click on these two arrows and connect to host again. Or in my case, I'll just choose the recent link there and it should connect me. And since you've generated that open SSH config and added it to your config file, any servers that you have access to in Teleport can be easily accessed this way. Well, I hope this was helpful. Feel free to leave any questions that you have down in the comments. Thanks for taking the time to try out Teleport.